Let's Talk Money. Welcome back. You're with us on Let's Talk Money. And this week, we are discussing factor-based investing, what is also known as smart beta investing. So all of our viewers are extremely smart, and I'm sure they want that extra edge uh, into their mutual fund portfolio. So that's the question, gentlemen, now that we've understood the concept. The point is that in your mutual fund portfolio, which anyway has lots of diversified mutual funds, and I think a lot of people have understood that you need to have a basic index fund, like a nifty fund maybe, uh, how do you add this whole factor-based approach, Pradeep? And uh, to what extent, 10%, 5%, 20%, 20%. How should you design the portfolio then using these? Yeah, so to blend into a portfolio is always a tricky question. So okay. you need to think about it uh, slightly differently. So if somebody is uh, positive about India as a story, mm -hmm. right? If you're saying that India is a growth uh, story, I'm going to be invested in it for a long period of time. Factor investing gives a very different and alternative way of looking at that growth story and participating in it at a much more lower cost compared to a typical active fund. And at the same time, it gives you the benefit of a systematic rule-based approach, which will kind of reduce your risk at the same time. Mm -hmm. So on a risk-adjusted basis over a long period of time, if someone is looking at a decent return, then uh, factor investing definitely comes into play. Mm -hmm. And there, uh, again, the question of how much is a very tricky question. So one way of looking at it is, if you're looking at a multi-factor model, for example, um, it can be a very good substitute for a pure breed in a index fund in a large cap index or a mid cap index or a small cap index because okay. what it does is it has a similar kind of rigor mm -hmm. when it comes to looking at uh, the, the key mm -hmm. ingredients that go into successful investing. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, it tries to create a bit of an alpha over and above the index. Yeah, so I think this is taking our investing journey and experience to the next level, right? 2.0 or 3.0, that right. instead of just a plain vanilla right. nifty 50 fund, you might want to select something where you have the nifty 50 stocks, but there's an additional filter of, say, quality or maybe alpha, higher growth, so on and uh, so forth. Uh, on the point of cost, Pradeep, that was a really important point for all of viewers as well. Sure. Typically, uh, many of these multi-factor uh, funds, if they are just based on the ind indices, they would be low in cost. But you mentioned that there are some blended strategies where there could be some uh, element of active fund management as well. Yes. Uh, are there a lot of such examples and, you know, is the cost substantially higher, lower, comparable to diversified funds? Not too many examples at this stage, but mm -hmm. we would expect uh, more such funds to come uh, in the times to come. But then uh, in terms of cost, that should still be lower than an actively managed fund. Most okay. of the smart beta strategies should be somewhere in between passive and active when it comes to uh, cost as well. Okay, there you go. So, you know, uh, an edge to your portfolio with the perhaps lower costs as well. So that sounds really good. Now we come to the tough part, Harshwardhan. Now, you tell us which are the strategies that make sense to you right now, why, what are you convinced about, and what would you recommend? So, you know, Surbhi, let's understand in, mm -hmm. in layman terms, mm -hmm. what am I trying to do? Mm -hmm. And what am I getting in return of that? How much additional mm -hmm. risk am I taking? That's the equation that you're trying to balance. Mm -hmm. Okay, so say, for example, I am saying that I have an option to invest into Nifty 50, yeah. which is an index fund, yeah. which cost me, say, 0.3% mm -hmm. as, uh, as a fee. My returns are going to be in line with market. If the markets go up, that's the maximum I'm going to make, whatever the market has given. And if it falls, I'm going to lose as much as the market has lost. Yeah. Now, what I'm trying to do is, I'm saying that, look, I'm not happy with this, or rather, mm. I want something more. Mm. So I say that, look, let me put some filter into this to mm -hmm. say that Nifty 50, value 20. Okay. Okay, so I say I want to invest only 20 companies mm -hmm. in terms of valuations, etc. They're more favorable. So that in case there is any kind of a downturn, I will fall lesser than the Nifty 50 now. Mm -hmm. And in case the markets go up, the value unlocking happens, I will make more money than the Nifty makes. Mm -hmm. That's my intent. Okay. Okay. So first I'm going to calculate is what is the additional cost am I paying for this? Mm -hmm. So obviously it's going to be a little more expensive in yeah. terms of fund management cost yeah. uh, over and above the Nifty 50. Sure. The next element I'm going to see is mm -hmm. that how much additional risk am I taking? Mm -hmm. Because there is going to be more risk if Nifty 50 has, yeah. say, X risk, and I'm yeah. boiling it down to 20 companies out of that, yeah. I'm yeah. going to have more yeah. risk. Yeah. So if I'm taking additional risk, mm. what is the additional gains am I making? Sure. All you know, you may take more risk, but the returns are the same. So right. risk-adjusted returns. So risk-adjusted returns. So you have uh -huh. to evaluate that. Yeah. Then you come to the segmentation, like mm -hmm. the size of the company. So suppose mm -hmm. now we looked at Nifty 50, then you have Nifty 100, then you yeah. have Nifty 200, then you have right. Nifty 500. Right. So what is the universe of selection that you want to pick? Yeah. So it has to be 100 companies, top 100, 200, mm -hmm. 300. Mm -hmm. So 
So that again will be your parameter, individual parameter. You mm -hmm. sit down with your financial advisor and you say that, you know, this yeah. is what we are going to be looking at, the sure. universe of investments. Sure. Then you pick the strategy. Right. Now, which could be alpha, could be low volatility, could be momentum, yeah. could be quality, value. It could Whatever be Whatever suits your parameters. own personal objective and, and style. Correct. So yeah. in my personal opinion, mm -hmm. now I like four factors. Okay. Okay, very clearly. So one, I like the equal weight. Okay. I like equal weight. Why? Because as I mentioned that I have equal uh, exposure to all the companies hmm. of the Nifty 50, e yeah. etc. Yeah. The other I like is alpha combined with low volatility. Okay, so alpha will capture stocks that are likely to do better than the index. And they're less volatile. And they're less volatile. So that's fantastic. Uh, that, that's, a, that's an ideal situation, right? <laughs> yeah. And the universe of stocks to pick is mm. top 300 companies. So I have large cap, mid cap, small cap, the entire universe has mm -hmm. been picked up. So Nifty, okay. alpha. Okay. Would have a you know the 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 universe of companies would be say large mid and small it goes across all. Okay. So if I have an if I have a you know strategy where I have alpha with low volatility, okay. and you know if I, my risk adjusted return is obviously much better. Yeah. I mean why not? Mm -hmm. And I'm paying a cost which is lesser than an active fund but little higher than a passive okay. fund. So I think that okay. works very well. Value of course I mean, over a long term you need to buy something at a right valuation. You mm -hmm. may find a very good company yeah. but if you're paying a high price for it uh -huh. your profit you coming into profitability will take longer. Okay so so name finally as we're wrapping up name some fun some you know strategies and not specific recommendations but where you like where you've liked the product and which are offering these combinations that, that you just So say. one is of course uh, nifty mm -hmm. equal weight. I just okay. mentioned I gave you the yeah. example of yeah. how yeah. the allocations yes. are different. Yes. I like the nifty alpha low volatility 30 I believe that's okay. the strategy that you have. You have value, of course. I mean, as simple as that, a nifty uh, 50, value 20 could sure. be. Uh, you have momentum. Mm -hmm. uh, we spoke about momentum. Yeah. Momentum, uh, specifically, if you have a structurally positive outlook on the market. Sure. So only if you are very clear that, okay, there could be volatility in the short term. But I'm, you know, positive on the structural growth of the economy and the market. Mm -hmm. So India is in that phase right yeah. now. So you yeah. would want to play the momentum, momentum strategy. Momentum strategies. So, okay. uh, so we spoke about it the last time on the small cap side, yeah. right? So in the small cap, my personal belief is that it's a 250 universe, the small cap index. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's, you know, it would be wise for an aggressive investor or a you know, well-heeled investor to invest in the entire basket of 250 because mm -hmm. the small cap space, it's about stock selection. Yeah. So you could use a filter which is momentum and quality. Okay. Okay. In the small cap side. Okay. So it'll be nifty, uh, small cap, 250, momentum, quality, 100, fun kind of a thing. I remember this, yes, I remember this, which is why it, it you know, came to my mind that we should do a complete breakup, a full classroom on uh, multi-factor yeah. funds. Before we sign out for the final word, uh, things to avoid, mistakes to avoid and things to keep in mind while you're going about, uh, you know, uh, trying your hand with these smart meter strategies. Sure. Uh, any smart meter strategy should be assessed on uh, who is offering you that, mm. how well is their model, how long has it been back tested, how robust is it and how has it performed across market cycle. With that, uh, then you will have a good enough information to kind of uh, tip your toes. Okay. All right, gentlemen, thank you very much. Very, very interesting subject at hand. And something I think going sort of forward, we will hear more product innovation and perhaps more interest from investors as well. Thank you for uh, taking us through this one. But we, we'll, with that, we are completely out of time. It's a wrap on this edition of Let's Talk Money. Thank you for watching. Keep sending us your feedback, comments and queries. See you again next week. Let's talk money.